All right, welcome to <clears throat> notes here on the Electoral College for uh, AP government. Um, I imagine most of you, as you load it up, expected to be singing that song and discussing <coughs> the merits of the Electoral College. Um, let me start by just saying that this is easily the <clears throat> one of the most, if not the most confusing uh, things for kids to understand. And it's uh, one of the more complex issues of our government, yet it elects our president. So kind of interesting how that works out, okay? Uh, best story I can tell you about that is about 10 years ago, there actually were two representatives that proposed an amendment to abolish the Electoral College, not because of the flaws in it, but because they used to be history teachers and they had such a difficult time teaching their students how the Electoral College works. Okay, so a question from AP exam a few years back, since 1972, Voters in presidential elections have, and the correct answer is um, become more focused on the individual candidates. All right, this is what we talked about the other day of the idea of a candidate centered campaign as opposed to a um, party or issue centered campaign. So the focus is more on the candidates and less on the parties um, themselves. Okay, another question here for you. All right, go ahead and pause your videos. Of the following is true as a result of the electoral college system. Hold on one second. Okay, we're back. Um, so, which of the following is true of the electoral college? Pause your videos. Take a second and answer. And the correct answer is B. All right, encourages candidates to concentrate their campaigns in competitive, populous states. So, we're going to go for the um, Ohio's. Florida, okay, uh, those are your main states, Pennsylvania, because they're competitive uh, and they're populous, all right, so that's where the focus becomes. States like California, New York, Texas, rarely talked about because they might be populous, but they're not competitive, all right, in, um, in that regard. So um, it takes sort of the emphasis away from some of the uh, larger states, including Illinois. We're actually very minimally uh, involved as far as the Electoral College is concerned. We vote pretty overwhelmingly Democratic. All right. So here's your 2012 uh, Electoral College map. You obviously can see how the setup is. You should have probably seen this if you follow the election anyways. Okay. The number is based on the number of House members plus the number of senators per state. Okay, so in Illinois' case, you can see Illinois has 20 electoral votes, 18 representatives, and two senators. The most important thing to note here it is not the number of, or not the representatives and senators that are in the Electoral College. The, who is in the Electoral College is chosen a little differently, but the number that that state gets to pick is based on the number of uh, reps and senators that you have. All right, and you'll also notice Washington, D.C. here gets three, and that's because of the 23rd Amendment. All right, um, since they have no senators and no representatives, they get the bare minimum, which you can see is Wyoming, Montana, the Dakotas, um, to uh, give them representation for president. So they're on par with the smallest states, but they have no representation or senators in uh, Congress. All right, the way the Electoral College works, each state has as many electors as it has senators and representatives. We saw that on the map. The state legislature decides how its electors are chosen. So um, that's in the Constitution. So there's nothing that says the electors have to vote a certain way or anything like that or who has to be an elector. The state makes that choice, who gets to be in the Electoral College and who does not. All right, the way Illinois does it is each candidate submits a list of their 20 electors that they want to be in the Electoral College in the event that they win. And then Illinois will award who, um, those electoral votes to whoever wins the state, and then the 20 people Obama picked get to actually vote for him in the Electoral College. Also note that this is a system. It's not a place. It's not a building. All right, They never even meet in one place. It's the system with which we choose to elect the president. So with our hokey video at the beginning implying it's like a college it's not a college it's more of a system than anything else all right and you definitely need to know that 48 states use winner take all which says that if you win the popular vote in a state you get all of the electoral votes of that state so in the movie recount we've been watching florida's 25 electoral votes went to whoever won the popular vote in that state that's why that was so critical okay there are 538 votes in the electoral college that's a number you need to store in the back of your head 
and you also need to know that there are 270 votes needed to win the Electoral College. Okay, so that would be 51 percent, one more than half. If you get 51 percent of the electoral votes, you win. 269, no winner. All right. In the event we have a tie, which would be 269 to 269, or no majority, which can happen with a um, third party election. So let's say you have Republicans, Democrats, and let's have fun here and put the Green Party up there. All right. Let's say the Green Party gets 20 electoral votes and the Republicans get 260. All right, that would be 280. I got to do some math here. Uh, let's say the Democrats get the rest. I'm not even going to do the math there. Nobody would have the necessary 270 to win, so the House would then select it. And the way the House does it is it's one per state. So the states are all on equal footing in the House of Reps. Illinois representatives, all 18 of them, would get together and they would get one vote, just like Delaware's one representative would have one vote too. So clearly that's a concession to the small states. Okay? Now some flaws in the Electoral College. Whoever wins the popular vote may not become president. All right, that happened in 1824 with the corrupt bargain, Henry Clay. 1876, we mentioned in class, uh, which was the Compromise of 1877. 1988, Cleveland won the popular but lost the electoral vote. And in 2000, I put the question mark there just because Gore technically was the winner, but uh, there were some votes not counted in things, and it was by about 500,000 votes. So pretty close by presidential election standards. All right. There is nothing requiring a state's presidential electors to vote for the candidate that wins. Okay, So you could get 100% of the popular vote, but the electors could then choose uh, to vote for someone else. So they are not bound to do that. But tradition says that they vote for whoever wins the state. And then that third party candidate could throw the election to the House of Representatives. That has happened twice, 1800 with Jefferson and in 1824 with the corrupt bargain. So it hasn't happened in almost 200 years, so it's, that part's kind of phased out. Okay. Uh, common complaints about the Electoral College is similar to the last slide. The winner-take-all feature, okay? Even if you win by one vote, you get all the electors. It doesn't reflect the will of the people. And in a sense, disenfranchising all of the people that voted for the losing candidate because they have no say, even though the candidate may have only won by one vote. All right? You see the winner-take-all focus on the large states because you'd rather win narrow elections in Texas and Illinois and New York than you would win narrow elections in Wyoming or Idaho. Okay, so the smallest states become overrepresented at the same time, which is weird, and that's because of the plus two for the Senate. All right, every state gets two extra votes to accommodate for their senators to sort of level the playing field. So in California's case, they have 53 reps plus two senators. So those senators give California a minimal percentage increase, whereas Wyoming has one representative, and then they get two senators or two extra votes for their senators, so they get a 200% increase because of that, where California has a very minimal percent uh, in that regard, okay? And then, as we said, the electors are not constitutionally bound, all right? There are a number of cases of faithless electors that voted against the will of their party, okay? Um, that happened with George Wallace in 1968 when North Carolina voter voted for him when he should have voted for Hubert Humphrey. And in 1976, Ronald Reagan got one electoral vote because somebody did not want to vote for Gerald Ford. All right, so those are some of your complaints all right, on the Electoral College. All right, we're going to talk about ideas to replace the Electoral College, but that will be on video number two.